So my dear friends in Christ, I welcome you to the 23rd day of our global family liberation. Today, my dear friends in Christ, we are praying for the liberation from evil circumcision. Evil circumcision. You see, there are things we take for granted that Satan and the agents of darkness do not take them for granted. Those things we overlook, they are the things Satan usually use to hold us in bound. If you can remember, in the book of Genesis chapter 17, verse 9 to 14, the Lord God entered into covenant with our father Abraham. And the symbol of this covenant happens to be circumcision. The Lord God told Abraham that every male child born of his household must be circumcised at the eight days. Now, this is something it's a divine mandate. It's a welcome development. And covenant, if you remember, is a mutual agreement. The covenant between Abraham and God, the covenant between human beings and God, or what I may call divine covenant. is a spiritual exercise. And in this covenant, according to this instruction given to Abraham, through circumcision, one is given a mark. One, if you like, is initiated into God's family. As I said, it's a spiritual exercise. But unfortunately, human beings, most human beings still practice circumcision. They observe circumcision. Even up to date, but unfortunately, they forget the spiritual aspect of it. People no longer consider circumcision as a covenant between God and man. They just do it for the sake of doing it. Every male child must be circumcised. And so, some do their own, most people do the circumcision in the hospital. Majority, 
in Africa do their own in a traditional way. Ask me, or if I may ask you, where or what is the place of the church when it comes to circumcision? Does the church play any role in the circumcision of a child? How many of you that are watching me right now invited a man of God to pray before the circumcision of your child? And I can assure you, most of you, if not all of you, did not even know the importance of praying before circumcision. You just do it carnally. Blood is involved. Because when you cut off the full scale of a male child, blood is involved. It's a circumcision. It's a covenant. And because of your carelessness, because of human carelessness, devil has grabbed that opportunity to initiate so many children. So many children at that point in time, because you did not involve God, you forget that it was God that gave the idea. It was God that gave the mandate. Okay? And because you did not involve God, you did not pray to God, you, did, you just did it carnally. Unfortunately, that is when the devil thrives. And that is what I call evil circumcision. It's not about circumcision. Who did you do that circumcision? Did you do it in the name of God? Did you do it in the name of the daughter or nurse, the midwife? You just called the midwife and you gave her some money and then before you know it, I have done it. Oh, buddy, you have done circumcision. Not knowing that as long as God has pronounced it as a covenant, devil heard it. It's a covenant, a mutual agreement between human. That would have been a meeting point, a point where a child is dedicated to God. I know there are uh, later on, you people talk about uh, outing. Uh, what do you call it? A dedication of the child. All these things are medicine after death. Most of the initiation takes place at home or in the hospital. You just go to the church for formality. After your period of I don't know what. But by then, all the necessary initiation, early initiation, one, circumcision, two, naming ceremony, all these important events in the life of the children, we are not done. If you, you can tell me, you can, uh, you, some of you are saying, I'm hearing it for the first time, who, who will attest to me, you will bear me witness that both circumcision Never ceremony, God is never involved. Most of you will just wake up one day to give your child any name. Or in the Yoruba, okay, especially those of you Yoruba, never ceremony, they don't joke with it. 
It's, it's a big ceremony. But unfortunately, the church is not involved at this time. How many of you invited a man of God or called a man of God to be part of the naming ceremony of your children? How many of you, even if it means calling a man of God on the phone, please declare, pronounce the name of our children? Bless, we want to give our child a name. Kindly bless the name or kindly bless our child. You, it doesn't need to be there. How many of you call the man of God? They say, please, oh, today is the naming ceremony of our children. Or oh, today we are about to circumcise our children. Can you please at least make a declaration? Declare a blessing upon our children before the circumcision. You discover that most of these things are the things people take for granted. But I can assure you, devil doesn't take them for granted. And so most people have been initiated. Look at those people. Like when you invite the elders or these old women, if you want to do it in a traditional way, to circumcise your child. Some of them are even pagans. Some of them are unbelievers. You invite your elders to name your children during the naming ceremony. Some of them are pagans. Some of them are unbelievers. And yet, this is an important ceremony in the life of every child. There is something we call sacrament of initiation in the Catholic Church, which baptism is one of them. You see that, you discover that all the right of initiation, tradition, will first of all lay foundation. Evil right of initiation has been completed in the home. A lot of ritual practices, I'm talking of those of you in Africa, you discover that they have done a lot of initiation of this child. In, circumcision is one of those init traditional initiation. Naming ceremony is one of them. They have done all this thing, laid an evil foundation in the life of the child. Before later on, maybe in three months or whatever, you now bring your child for presentation. And at that, that time, and this is by that time you can imagine. Look at what happened when John the Baptist, during the naming ceremony of John the Baptist. Something remarkable happened. They didn't just do it carnally. Okay? It was a prayer event. A glorious moment. And it was that day that the father regained his speech. The fourth day. As soon as he mentioned, his name shall be called John. The man started speaking. So it's a spiritual exercise. When you do it the way it's supposed to be done, it's a great day of joy. It's a day God releases his blessing upon the parents and upon the newborn child. But unfortunately, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Most of the problem our children are having today, you know, they have all these things we take for granted. If you agree with me that circumcision is the symbol of that covenant between God and Abraham. And we are the descendants of Abraham. That is why we go into circumcision. 
You should equally involve God, the author of this covenant. He should be part of it. Don't just give your child to a midwife. Oh yeah, please help me circumcise this child. Without any atom of prayer. No prayer at all. Is that error? We have secularized everything. And that's why most people, are, you see people struggling. Unnecessarily, you keep wondering, where have things gone wrong? I'm just telling you, okay? Things went wrong at this early stage of people's life because they, we take a lot of things for granted. But through this family liberation, we are leaving no stone on top. And there is a controversial issue today. You know, in most African countries, you know, we talk about uh, female circumcision. When God gave Abraham the mandate, he gave him the mandate to circumcise his male children, not the female children. And that's why is a is a fact. Even the UN National General Assembly frowns at female genital mutilation. It's a controversial issue today. There are a lot of issues around that, and some cultures they say it's their culture. You know? So, female circumcision is another crazy problem facing the society today. Most people do it just because others are doing it. Most people do it they claim, okay, it's our tradition. So we have to do it. It has medical implication. You know, can you mention some of you female, some of the disadvantage of female genital mutilation, that is female circumcision, what are the disadvantages? Okay, let me see what you have to say about that. The disadvantage notwithstanding, does it even have any advantage? If it has any advantage, you can state it. We are talking of info circumcisions. Circumcisions that was not approved by the most high God. So if it has any advantage, can we state it? Let's see. But if it doesn't have any advantage, you can still state some of the disadvantage. Whether advantage or no disadvantage, the most important thing is when God told Abraham to circumcise, he told him to circumcise his male children. Cecilia found it said, no pleasure during intercourse. Infection at difficult level. Rosalind Oye said it causes infection and then difficulty in level. Okay? Promiscuity is one of the disadvantages. So these are the disadvantages of female circumcision. You know, and somebody even went as far as saying it can even cause barrenness. 
and uh, delay a child bed. We are hearing from the horses about these are women. So I was asking any advantage. Our sister Cecilia said, do advantage. So Anita is of the view that it is difficult during childbirth. So sexual transmitted disease, one can get sexual transmitted disease in the process. So somebody said, just please say, yes, become sexy. So, and so on and so forth. That is promiscuity. So these are evil circumcision. And then we need to pray against it and we need to stand against it. You know, when we talk about evil circumcision, apart from uh, female genital mutilation, which you have acknowledged, another Evil circumcision, any circumcision you do without involving God, the rest are sure that devil will take over. God must be involved. Remind God, pray today. There is prayer here. Prayer before circumcision. Prayer after circumcision. Don't just do it carnally. It's not something you should do carnally. Don't take anything for granted. If you are if you are used to praying before doing anything, I don't think you would have fallen into this error. So I see some people praying for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because of ignorance. But who will tell you this? Who will let you know? The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Knowledge is power. Whatever knowledge you get from this global family liberation is something that will help you and use it to enlighten your children. If it is a tradition today, that evil tradition must be broken. Enough. Evil circumcision today must come to an end. And all of you that have been initiated through evil circumcision because at times you see yourself, a lot of things, having attack in the dream, people chasing you in the dream, having spiritual husband, having spiritual wife, all these evil dreams, they have origin. You may be wondering, where are these things coming from? Where are all these? It is through some of this initiation. We will still come to reincarnation. It's another crazy belief. But today we are talking of evil circumcision. So please, if you have practiced any of this evil circumcision, we have to pray for mercy and we have to ask God to deliver us from this evil circumcision. But I'm very sure you were circumcised as a man without prayer, without God being involved. This is an opportunity to ask God for mercy. This is an opportunity to ask God to deliver you from evil circumcision. So, somebody is talking about opening of ear. Ibapunti for women. Well, depending on what you have in mind, 
Is it not for earring? I may not like to go into that, but it doesn't make any difference. When the Israelites were in the wilderness, this same good earring, the reality he got that, melted it, and then fashioned a golden calf, which they worship. I don't want to shock you now, to let you know that all these things you put on in the name of fashion, some of them are idol. Okay, when you gather them together, you can form a golden calf. Some people have even injured themselves. Look at the kind of things you carry with your ear. With or without them, it doesn't even add any beauty to you. up to you. Everything depends on you and the reason for doing whatever you are doing. So many people have even injured their children in the process. Look at the kind of thing you carry. And a very delicate Anything can hold that thing and it will tear your ear. Especially those big ones. Why must you risk yourself? Why must you risk your life? In a nutshell, the human body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. St. Paul rightly declares that this body is not your own. This body has been bought with a price. You have no right to mutilate your body. All the tattoos, tattoos you put, you keep drawing rubbish on your body, they are part of the mutilations. And these tattoos, some of them cannot even be wiped away. The day you will go to heaven, that is what you will explain. The first thing you will explain to God. You have to explain. You have a lot of things to explain. All of you that have mutilated your body, drawing scorpion, drawing snake, drawing, writing rubbish, your body, mutilating your body, you know, when you go to heaven, you will account for it because God will remind you that this body is not your own. You have been bought by price. It is the temple of the Holy Spirit and when you mutilate your body, you drive the Holy Spirit away from your body. So my dear friends in Christ, whether you talk about evil circumcision, evil mutilation, evil tattoo, you know, see what people draw on their body. I can't just understand what is wrong with this world. It's not even, it doesn't look beautiful. It doesn't tattoo. I don't know. You are just giving yourself, we are talking about mark of the beast. Some of you have just willingly you thought Mark of the Beast is only CCCs. CCCs. All this mark you are giving your body can as well stand as the mark of the beast. And devil is very tricky. He's not coming the way you, you will expect him. You, you, you will be waiting for CCCs. He comes in different forms. 
May God deliver you today from every evil circumcision. May God deliver you from evil mark. Any evil mark. And then there are some mark. You wake up, you will see a fingering. You know, in the dream. All these people, and there are signs that you have been initiated. When you wake up, you see fingering. Witchcraft, drawing mark, like see if they use uh, fingernails on your body. That is after you have block sucking demons. So I pray that today, may God deliver you from all those evil mark. Any form of circumcision, any form of mutilation, may God deliver you and deliver your family. And may He use His blood to purify you, to sanctify your body. To cleanse you once again. So that I may he restore his image in you. Restore the Holy Spirit in you. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. So I declare you free from every evil circumcision today. And I declare your family free from evil circumcision. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.